Hello everyone, Meister Draven here. You might be wondering why I'm lighting one of these up. I do it about once every year, usually for a special occasion. This happens to be a special occasion because I just hit 5,000 subscribers on the channel. I'm very, very happy for that. So, celebratory cigar smoke. So I'm smoking a nice Dominican Republic cigar. Uh, and just enjoying a nice day out here. It's a lovely day in Singapore, hot as always, and a little bit cloudy. It was a little bit sunny earlier, but it's clouding over because this happens to be the rainy season here. Not a big deal. Anyways, I just wanted to uh, celebrate with you all uh, and express my thanks for uh, helping me reach 5,000 subscribers. It's been a huge, huge journey for me, one that started almost a decade ago. It's been on and off. As a lot of you know, I stopped doing what I was doing about three years ago, four years ago. Went on hiatus, had to learn a whole bunch of things. Came back with a fresh new understanding of how to make music. And even then I wasn't perfect. And nobody is perfect, but I was still way under where I wanted to be. So as you know, I started off uh, with Streets of Rage again. That kicked my butt a little bit. I did multiple versions of Streets of Rage. I did one, two, and then I did three. And then I went back and I did the gold editions because I had learned a whole bunch of things from the recording process, how to master, how to EQ. And then from there it became the Final Crash editions, which I recently uploaded a couple months ago, or two months ago, I should say. And from there, obviously, Revenge of Shinobi. Now we're on to Sonic the Hedgehog. I know 5,000 subscribers to most YouTubers is a pittance. For me, it's the first major milestone, especially since when I started out, I didn't really have a lot of subscribers. I remember when I hit 1,000, and I thought, that's pretty much it. Like, I don't know if I'll go any higher than that. Um, and then, lo and behold, I started accelerating. The subscriber rate began to accelerate, and within three months, four months now, I think, I, think, I believe it was in, at the end of August, I hit 4,000 subscribers, and then I picked up another 1,000 between here and there. So it's accelerating every day. I'm watching my metrics, I'm seeing it go up. That snowball is going down the hill. And it's becoming more and more uh, evident every single day that I am starting to really pick up a lot of steam on the on the channel. I do have a long way to go. That's okay. You may have noticed I've been a little bit on on hiatus since January. I'll explain that in a second. So the reason I've been kind of in on hiatus since January, number one, I caught COVID. Not a big deal, but it kind of wiped out my energy levels. I didn't really have a lot of energy. Another reason is because I was trying to rejig how I'm going to do my channel. There's going to be a lot of surprises. I'm about to drop a few on you here. Uh, but before I do, I just want to express some, some personal feelings that I have about this uh, channel. The musical journey that I went on is huge. I am 100% self-taught. I always have been. I've never stepped foot inside of a classroom. I've watched a couple of tutorial series basically on mixing, mastering, nothing major. I've mostly trial and error. This dates back to all the way when I was 17 years old, back in 1996, 1997, and I got my first drum set, taught myself how to play uh, drums by listening to Countdown to Extinction by Megadeth, and once I, that's a fairly simple album for drummers. If you're a drummer, you know that's not a very difficult album, but when I learned how to do that, I went back and I made it my mission to drum Rust in Peace from start to finish without missing a note, and I succeeded. It took two and a half years, I believe, but I was able to drum that entire album start to finish in my younger days when I had more energy, when I was a young whippersnapper, which I'm not anymore. Um, and I thought that that was a personal achievement of mine. And then when it came to the composing side, I thought, wow, this is really an opportunity to do something new. I didn't want to play one instrument, I wanted to compose. That was kind of where I was focusing my attention on. So. From there it became, how am I going to do this? Well, the VST craze kicked in, I started up playing around with Streets of Rage songs, just experimenting, and then from there I became more and more serious about making sure that I was doing a good job. And that's partially why I walked away at first, because I wanted to scrap everything and restart. Um, the fan support at the time was enormous, and I'm going to always be thankful for that. It's even more um, now so. Um, you guys have been great. I've noticed that my videos are... I don't think any one of them has dropped below 98% approval, so I must be doing something right. Uh, thanks for that. Um, it's a good feeling to know that you're doing good music, you're putting your heart, your heart and your soul into it, and it's getting results. And although it's not technically my compositions, that's about to change, because this, this year will be the first year 
that I start writing my own material from scratch. I'm going to be doing sort of a rock-infused synthwave chiptune combination, and I'm going to be calling it uh, uh, Chip Synth in honor of the Chip Synth MD VST that I used to create all my my Sega Genesis sounds with. Um, I love Chip Synth MD. It's by I believe it's from Plogue Software. Great VST. I'm going to be using that name for the genre of music that I'm creating. And it's going to be a lot of high energy, eclectic music, a lot of power, a lot of dynamics. I like very rocky, intense music, so it's not going to be straight up dance. It's not going to be straight up, you know, quieter synth wave, and it's not going to be sort of light rock. It's going to be a powerful combination of all of them with a slight tint of metal in there because I am, in fact, quite a metal head. I always have been. So that's, that's one of the directions that I'm going. Another direction is I'm going to be populating the channel with some covers. Now you might be wondering, what do I mean by covers? Do you mean covers of, of existing tunes done in a, in a different style? Well, it could mean that, but I'm going to be focusing on some heavy hitting songs, songs that you all know and love from different artists, but I'm going to be doing a, a chiptune take on all those different songs. So I'm going to be reconstructing all the songs from scratch using um, mostly chip synths, VSTs and things like that. And I'm going to be singing over top because I do actually have quite a hell of a singing voice, believe it or not. So I'm able to sing a whole bunch of stuff. I can sing heavy metal, I can sing death metal, I can sing Zeppelin, I can sing Guns N' Roses. Um, I can do a lot of that stuff. A little harder now that I'm 45 as opposed to, to 22 when I was singing in karaoke bars and lighting the place on fire. The last time I sang karaoke was in Chicago. I was on business about four or five years ago, and I remember singing a whole lot of love in that place, and I had that place ready to explode. And I thought to myself, you know, this is fun. Why don't I do it more? So you're going to be seeing a different side of me here. You're going to be seeing a singing side of me where I'm going to just be blaring my guts out, singing all these songs. And I hope you like it because I'm going to try and make sure that my singing voice is up to, is up to scratch. This is probably not helping right now, but that's okay. I'll get over it. I only smoke one of these, one or two of these every year. That's going to be the approach. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, there's going to be a lot of focus on new content on the channel, but I'm not going to be stopping the expanded and enhanced soundtracks. I'm, I might stop doing full soundtracks for a while. I think Sonic will be my last one, and I think the, the next one I do will probably be Shinobi 3. I know a lot of you guys are asking for it, and I think I'm going to honor that request. So it's going to be Shinobi 3 next. From there, I'm going to be dabbling, I think, in one shots, one or two tracks from a particular uh, soundtrack, and I'm going to just be varying them up just for the sake of having a little bit of variety on the channel. So I might do one Contra song, I might do one Castlevania song, I might do something else. And I'm, going to, I'm just going to be varying them up for a while until I move on to a big project. And in between, I'm also going to be doing the covers, I'm going to be doing the originals. And hopefully that will populate the channel with some interesting new uh, content. Um, another thing I'm going to be doing is focusing heavily on moving away as much as I can from my uh, real-life job, which is I do a lot of contract work. One of the reasons why my wife and I were able to move to Singapore so easily is because I have, can just do my job wherever I am on the planet. I don't have to be in a physical office ever. Um, it's good in some ways, but you're at the mercy of a freelance system. It's a little bit difficult to do to get the work come in, so I have to make sure that I'm on top of my game. So. I'm going to be giving you guys more reasons to become Patreon subscribers. If you want, it's never going to be mandatory. I'm never going to hide. I'm not going to hide a lot of things behind the paywall. The only thing I might hide behind a paywall is maybe behind the scenes stuff. Maybe how I achieve certain sounds. Things that I, that I think would be that you guys would find cool if you were exclusive. You know, if you had access to those secrets of mine, how I get these sounds. Because as you know, I don't sample anything. I don't... Um, lift audio from WAV files. I don't. I don't take any stems or anything like that. I rewrite every song from scratch, from the ground up. There's one. One of the videos I'm going to be putting up is actually behind the scenes on how I achieve that signature grungy sort of a baseline theme from uh, Never Return to Live, the boss theme from Streets of Rage 2. It's not easy to get that sound, but I'm going to show you how I did it, how I got it exactly like it was in the original. It's not as easy as simply plugging in a preset and going to town. You have to actually, you know, put in the work to do the automation, to make subtle variations to the oscillators and that sort of thing. That I think you, uh, you guys would find pretty cool. And of course, I'm going to be doing other content too. I'm downloadable wallpapers and stuff. I want to hide the least amount of stuff behind a paywall as possible because 
I, if you're going to support me, I would rather you support me because you want to support me, because you love what I do and you want to free up my time so I can do more of it at a faster rate. That's pretty much it. But as far as the albums go, I'm going to be uh, obviously taking a page out of Iceferno's book. He's been putting a lot of stuff on uh, Bandcamp. I've been meaning to do it for a very long time, so that's going to be my, my push. And I'm going to be um, looking at putting my stuff on streaming platforms, Spotify, Tidal, others like that. At every single point, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm being as open and direct and transparent as possible. I like it that way. I don't like when people have to second guess what an artist is doing. Why are they doing that? Is there an ulterior motive? They're trying to get more money? I just want to make good content and be able to have fun doing it. And hey, if I can support myself at the same time, absolutely, I'm going to do that. Um, and I think the trade-off is for me to write, sorry, it's very hot out here. I think the trade-off for me is to write stuff that you guys are going to enjoy listening to and you guys are going to have fun. I hear a lot of you posting in the comments about how you're listening to the final crash editions of Streets of Rage while you're at the gym. Nothing could make me happier than that. I am blown away by that. Um, I'd like to also uh, express gratitude and thanks to the support that I've had from people who are also in the biz. Iceferno is one. Him and I, as you know, are, are good buddies. We just did a track together, Brawler's Nook, which was fantastic to work on. I enjoyed that so much. I enjoyed the camaraderie, the back and forth. No egos, no nothing. We just cranked out a good song. Expect more of that. I'm going to be reaching out. I might also try to revive podcasts as well. I've got a couple of uh, people in mind. Um, and we'll see where that goes. So for now, for now it's trying to be as happy as we can in 2024. Let me... Um, get a little bit off topic here but still kind of remain on it 2024 is not going to be a good year I'm just getting that out there it's going to be a chaotic year it's going to be a raucous year it's going to be a, 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 a trouble a trouble filled year and one of the things that gets us through it is good entertainment um, so I'm not going to politicize my entertainment obviously all I care about is making sure that we can get through this with a smile on our, on our faces because we're going to hit a lot of bumps in the road through 2024 and I do believe that at the end of it, things are going to get better, but they're going to get worse before they get better. So bear this in mind. When things start getting bad, listen to your music that you like, whether it's my music, whether it's your favorite band, your favorite artist, whatever. Just try and stay positive because we are going to go through a hell of a time and it's not going to be fun. And that's pretty much it. So 5,000 subscribers, I'm very, very happy for that. I'm looking forward to when we do 10,000 subscribers, which will hopefully be in a couple months because I think that we're moving pretty fast. I, I'm checking my analytics every single day. In the meantime, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for listening to this. Um, it's going to be a fun year. I've got a lot of cool content coming your way exclusively for you guys, and I hope that you enjoy every single moment of it. So hats off to you. Let's uh, smoke a cigar together. Don't do this often. It's bad for your health. <laughs> And uh, stay healthy, stay happy, keep listening to your music, and I will see you very, very soon. Maestro Draven, signing out.